Hello everyone and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. We begin today with a look at how wheat varieties are developed here at Oklahoma State University. To begin, we need to imagine the wheat field as a classroom and the wheat itself as the students. Here's SUNUP intern Samantha Smith to explain. From first grade to 12th grade, potential wheat varieties move through class levels as they approach their release. So this is the 2014 sixth grade class. That means they have been in this program for six years now. They've been in the program in different states. Each one of these little rectangles or plots uh, represents a different line. The progeny of this line will breed true so that three, four years from now when they become 10th, 11th, and 12th graders, they could actually be commercialized and released as variety. Up until this point, we didn't have that kind of distinguishing characteristic. This is the middle of the program. It's also the centerpiece of the program because we have about 2,000, a little bit more than 2,000 students in this nursery that we want to take and figure out which ones have the best potential to make a variety, again, three or four years down the road. We do that through very careful selection for all those vegetative and reproductive characteristics. We want to get down to about 250 because that's about the number we can reasonably test through replicated trials across the state. The current sixth grade class is one evaluated for dual purpose wheat. So we're not actually measuring forage production, we're measuring those characteristics that contribute to forage production. So we look for canopy closure, but we also look for those things that provide good canopy closure. How fast it comes out of the ground, how healthy that seedling is when it comes out of the ground, the, the seedling vigor, and also the growth habit, just how, how um, erect or how prostrate that plant grows, and it's, it's a wide variation. At this stage in production, wheat won't look as good as it does here in the greenhouse. Carver took us out to the field to show us why every variety isn't necessarily suited for dual purpose production. So here we're looking at a, uh, in genetic terms, this is what we call a, an F6 line. So it's six generations beyond the cross that was made, uh, again, six years ago. Uh, this is a line that breeds true. Uh, we're looking at the forage characteristics uh, during this time of November. Here we're looking at the ability of, that, uh, of this line to close the canopy because the canopy closure usually means a good healthy canopy for grazing later on. We want to close that ground up to minimize moisture loss through evaporation. Of course canopy closure also means a lot of forage produced. But some, some things that stand out for this plot that do not uh, really strike me as being extremely favorable, number one, it may not be very noticeable on camera but to me uh, looking at it, I see a very fine texture here. It's a very narrow leaf, um, and it also grows uh, somewhat prostrate. We didn't really get very good emergence. That, that there may be other reasons besides genetics that contributed to that, but we try to take that into account. So overall, I wouldn't rate this, this uh, particular plot as one that would be uh, favorable uh, for a grazing system. Now, that doesn't mean it wouldn't be uh, good for grain production. But here we're trying to take the best of both worlds. We want something that provides uh, a good, uh, uh, good grazeability uh, to the dual purpose producer, but also good grain production in the end. We guide and we structure our breeding program really about that dual purpose program. It, it, it puts a stress on the plant that we cannot get otherwise. We want to stress that plant so we can see how it tests under very harsh conditions that, you know, in Oklahoma we, we get our share of. Let's go look at another plot, maybe a more favorable one. Here's another progeny in the same uh, generation of inbreeding, so we're six years beyond the cross. I'm looking at uh, a more favorable canopy here. We're, we're not yet at canopy closure, but I see a very good growth habit. It's not extremely erect. It's not, certainly not prostrate. It's somewhere in the middle. That's exactly what we're looking for. I'm also looking at very good and healthy tillers. Now this plot has yet to be, uh, we have yet to remove the forage. And we'll do that mechanically. We won't use cattle because I like to get out here and look at the, the, the uh, recovery of these plots after the forage have been removed and we can do a lot better job of controlling how much removed using uh, basically lawn mowers. And we do that repeatedly throughout the fall season. But I really like the way this looks in terms of its potential grazeability. I think it's going to have good persistent once the forage is removed. You want to see that vegetative recovery so you get more forage production. Remember this is a grass, so we want to select it as if it is a grass, at least for this time of the year. I, I would be very pleased to see how this, uh, this does in terms of grain production later on. 
Carver is the expert on this class and says the outcome looks promising. I, I know what the genetics are that go into it and I know each and every year we're putting just a little bit better genetics into the program so we hope to get something better out in the end. So every year is, is, is different. Every year I get more and more pumped about it. So uh, I, have, I have extreme confidence that this class is going to produce something in the next four years. And with Carver's work, that something will be good for both grazing and grain. For SUNUP, I'm Samantha Smith.